Hey everyone, Steve here. Hope you've all been well. In this lesson we're going to look at how to play and write like Tim did on the self-titled debut album by This Town Needs Guns. And to do this we're going to look at the five songs that Tim tabbed out in the tab book for this album. That way we know that we're playing uh, the parts correctly and that also the music is also correct more importantly. Unfortunately, I won't be able to give you the tabs as they're copyrighted from the tab book. But if you do want the tabs, then head over to the This Town Needs Guns website and I think you can purchase the tab book there. Uh, what we'll do is we'll look at the parts, in, we'll look at specific parts in songs and then we'll try and create some kind of formula on how to write like that. So let's get into it. The five songs that are in the tab book are listed here and they use two different tunings. Four of the songs use C, G, D, G, B, D, which sounds like this. The other song, uh, which is Wanna Come Back to My Place and Listen to Some Bell and Sebastian, uh, all of these songs have got quite long titles, um, is in the tuning of F, A, C, G, C, E. And that sounds like this. So you may recognize that tuning from... So there's our two tunings, and these two tunings are used, as, as I said, across the five songs that have been tapped out. The songs that are in the tuning of C, G, D, G, B, D, all are in the key of um, G major. That's before we put a kappa one. And the other song in F, A, C, G, C, E is in C major, and that's also before a kappa has been applied. So when we do apply a kappa on the various frets, and I've listed here for you so you can see which uh, notes you're going to get when the capo is placed and also what key that also gives you. This would be over on my website and my Patreon page as well so you can get the, the materials from there. So let's get into it. So what I did was I went over each song. I pretty much learned all of the songs and then I started to uh, look at what sections in each song sounds similar. Like is it an intro, is it a verse, is it a chorus, or is it like a bridge, a middle, or a little connecting section there. And what I did is I had labeled them A to E. And then we'll look at each section in turn. Uh, we'll take a look at an example, and then we'll look at the sheet music itself to try and find evidence and um, little indications for how we can play and write like Tim did on this album. So we'll start with the A sections, and I've labelled these A sections because they have the kind of intro feel to them that are at the start of the song, and also two of the songs I've labelled A and B because they're also used as an intro, and they're also used as the verse of the songs. So there was two examples for you. So we had A sections and A and B sections together. So I've put a little key together for you here so you can get a uh, better understanding and it'll be easy for you to understand my explanations that way as well. So we'll start from the bottom. So the notes that I've highlighted in green, this is where Tim is launching his melody or where his harmony is coming from. And then he's putting notes in between, kind of like arpeggiating chords, right? And above that in the red Roman numerals, 
these are the chords that are given from the uh, tonality of what he's playing there. And next to it in the blue is when we pull up, put all the notes together in a particular phrase or a bar. However, I've indicated it throughout the tab. Then this is the chord spelling that we get. And above that, we've got the blue arrows, and these are the general direction of the melody. And uh, finally, at the top, I've circled in red parts that I find that are particularly difficult to play. So now we have all this information together, we can use this to create some kind of formula as how to play our own intro section to a, a TTNG song, or how we can write our own intro section like this as well. So first thing we can do is um, we start with a foundation and let's build it up. So we have the so framework to work with him. So the A sections or A and B are either, either one to three bars long. So that's great. That gives us um, you know, some restrictions to work in. So we don't have to think about going outside of those bars for now. The next thing we want to do is lay down our harmony. So here what Tim's done really for creating the harmony is usually using the using these open notes right and then and then usually hammering on afterwards so if we want to create our own harmony mess around with some open strings and then fretting some strings as well so we find a little progression that we like and this is down a lot to your ear so what sounds good so for example That sounds quite clashy, right? Well, that sounds okay, maybe we could use that. Eh, not too nice, it depends what you're going for. That sounds quite nice, and how about something up here? Yeah, that sounds a bit too diminished, right? That sounds quite nice. Let's just say, for example, we came up with that as our harmony idea. Next thing we want to do is construct our melody, the like little parts we're going to play in between. So this we can look at how Tim constructs his melodies. So he's kind of arpeggiating up and down the chords. We can see we have lots of ascending melodies, and then they also descend within the part. And this is good melody writing practice, you know, having these arching melodies so much. And it means the melody sounds nice, it's flowing, and it's not really just floundering around and not going in any general direction. So with that in mind, we can try and write our pieces to ascend and descend, or just ascend, or they can start from a descend as well. So if we had a harmony idea for an intro like that, then what could we do? So if you wanted to write a melody, so the next thing we want to look at, like I just said, after constructing, having that frame of mind, if we want to go up and down or just up or down, then we need to look at the techniques. So Tim uses his fingers to play. So if you're not very, if you're not very uh, dexterous with your fingers yet, so go out there and try and find some exercises to help you. So just some little exercises and you know, build up your speed, so take your time, you know, don't rush things, try and play along with a metronome, and that way you're going to play a lot more cleanly when you do uh, get better at that as well. The next thing we notice is using lots of um, hammering on, so he's using left hand. He's using left hand tapping and right hand tapping, and using slides and bends and stuff as well. So we can take our time and slowly construct that melody. So over time, this is something I did. And um, you want to choose either of the two tunings and then chuck a capo on whatever fret you want, whatever you think sounds good. So I had as my intro idea, right? So then we could try and construct something. Well, that sounds okay. And then... Remember, we want that slightly little complex, little fast runs in there, right? Like we saw in the uh, examples that Tim does. Uh, 
Um, and then last thing you need to think of is probably timing. So if you want it just to be in 4-4, that's completely fine. Uh, Tim does use some kind of uh, timing variations around the place. So what you could do here, if you do want it to purposefully uh, enter that realm of different timings, then you could, um, with your riffs, try and purposefully make them shorter or try to make them longer. And if you extend them or shorten them, then you'll find that usually you're st stepping out that 4-4 framework there. So with that in mind, uh, i just shown you what I did. This is the exact process I followed. I'll show you what I came up with as my intro example. And then we'll move on. Uh, it's a um, bit of a slow process, but we'll get there in the end. <laughs> So there was my example, and as you can see here, I highlighted in green where I was constructing my harmony from, and where my melody points were jumping from too. So you got the open, four, five. It's important to note as well, I forgot to point this out in the last part, but when we look at the uh, notes that Tim is using here, so we've got E sus. 2 sus 4 and 26 is dancier than 4, it's C major 9, and if we jump over to other songs we have F major 13, A minor 11, G major 9, C major 13, and so on. That means Tim's using quite a lot of notes there uh, when he's arpeggiating between these uh, jumping off points for the melody. So that means that he's probably not really thinking too much, uh, being so rigid with the melody, it's more that he's using his ear to guide him. And this is what I also used as well. Anyway, let's move on to the B sections. And these are kind of the, you know, the verse sections of the songs. And we'll take a look at them first and then we'll start talking about them after. So here's a few examples of them. <laughs> a few examples there so you got to hear them and you can also see with the tab and the music there what's going on so what you may have noticed first is that the uh, the parts themselves are a lot less complex than the intro um, hence they have that kind of you know more free more freedom in there so it's kind of that verse feel to it right so again with the green notes there we can see where the harmony and the melody has been constructed from so we've got the choice of starting notes and then he's arpeggiating in between that. So this is what I did. So I was messing around with notes for a while. Kind of wanted that as some extending pattern for my verse. So I first chose my root notes like that and then I started constructing some chords off that. Well, that doesn't sound too nice, then that's a bit better. And then we've got the next note. Um. So that was the idea I had, and then I thought like it kind of drifts at the end there, so we need to add something a little extra there just to complete the phrase itself. Let's move on. C sections. So these are basically the chorusy sections to the songs. You know, they have that you know a bit more busy other stuff going on there. So let's take a listen to a few examples of them.
there's a few examples there. So again, we can take this uh, framework that we came up with, right? This formula that we've been applying throughout the whole song. So this is what I did, messed around for a while. So I liked that progression. I think it moved on quite nicely from the verse. So next I wanted to build up some ideas and then as I start to build up more and more of this piece then I can start to add you know more of the arpeggiating and more of the rhythms and the techniques in there right so then I just start messing around with that like if you're hitting bum notes just go around them till you find what sounds nice, what sounds harmonious. And remember to try and make it resolve, so we've got that flowing pattern going on as well. I think, again, the video's dragging on a bit too much for you, so what we we'll do is we we'll skip along. So, uh, D sections, so these are either parts in the songs that connect, such as a bridge or a middle section, or they use as kind of an outro as well in some cases. And these are just, I think, when Tim was writing the song, alright, this song needs something little extra added in, like another section. all the examples there and these range from being quite complex to being quite simple and again I think this is just down to thinking like oh what does this song actually need does it need another super complicated part or does it need something that's quite nice and relaxed and flowing uh, with my song it just needed that nice little section to bridge the gap together and it's not too complex and it just flows on nicely from each other so I thought just this one <laughs> So next, now I've got those two notes. So I went back to the verse, maybe I could extend on that, that verse, that part I used. And... And then you start to build it up. I like that idea, so what can I add to that? over here just repeating the idea but changing it the the notes that I'm using right so I really like that and um, let's take a quick look at that That's everything for this lesson. Uh, it's been quite theory heavy, but I hope I've done it justice and you can understand what I'm getting at there. And hopefully better still, you'll be able to actually write something. Um, be patient, take your time. Uh, it did take me a while to construct all these parts together. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. It took me a few weeks to construct all together. I went through all of the theory as you can see, and I had a look at writing my own parts as well. But I think I've been quite thorough there. And this will be part one, so hopefully later on I will do the next album, Animals. Um, I think that will be a lot more difficult to learn than this album, so I'm looking forward to that challenge. Um, <clears throat> as always, uh, thank you so much for watching. It has been uh, one year since I released my first video, so I've been through quite a lot in that time. I've got quite a lot of subscribers and a lot of views, so I'm really thankful for 
all your support as always and if you do want to support me a bit more then you can uh, go over to my Patreon channel and you can choose to uh, donate money there as well but you do get stuff in return for that as well so you can check that out as always uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time bye bye